All right, folks, as you prepare your garden for spring, you might want to think about not only how the plants will look, but also the reason you're planting them. The Minnesota Landscape Arboretum's Curator of Endangered Plants, David Remacall, is an expert in Minnesota native plants. He joins us here in studio to talk more about it. David, thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thanks Welcome. for having me here. So what is the importance of planting, having Minnesota native plants on your property? Uh, well, they're beautiful is one thing. There's a lot of really neat Minnesota native plants, but um, I think that a, a big reason is that they do great for Minnesota. Um, they, a lot of native pollinators really are used to native plants, um, and they like that. They provide more than just food, too, um, so that's good. Um, and they, are, they often are pretty low care. Once you get especially prairie plants established in a garden, you don't even have to water them. They kind of do their own thing. Do their own thing. Yeah. A lot of people say, you know, sometimes doing the prairie and the native can just be kind of bland, right? They're not super floral. They're not super pops of colors. But I see all these packets of native plants, and they all have really great color. So it makes me think people are maybe yeah. getting the wrong ones. Yeah, I, there's a lot of great options for native plants. There's a lot of colors. One, one of the great things about native plants, um, we've got a native garden at home, and every all, sort of all through the spring, summer, fall, there's something flowering. Um, that's another nice reason to have native plants is that the plants themselves kind of set, that, set themselves up so that there's always something flowering, so there's always something for pollinators. Um, so you've always got something going on. You don't have to think about it too much. It, how many native plants do we have in Minnesota? Do we, is that even like a quantifiable oh, number? Man, I, I, I should know that number, but I don't. Um, it's somewhere in the, I think we've got a couple thousand native species. Thousands, that's um, but, crazy. Um, but I, I could be completely wrong on that. Okay. <laughs> well, we are seeing, and I guess it's been more of a movement that I've seen over the last several years of like people trying to have more you know, pollinator friendly lawns um, and, and yeah. you know, transforming what sort of used to be thought of as, as w the way your yard needed to look. Right. Um, do you see that movement sort of continuing here? Uh, I would hope so. Yeah. Um, I think that especially given uh, the, the, the warming that we've been having and the weird summers as far as, and winters as far as precipitation, um, the pure one species grass lawns are gonna be a lot harder to maintain. Mm -hmm. um, and the nice thing about the pollinator garden, uh, pollinator lawns is that they are usually a lot easier to maintain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. You brought a lot with us, so I want to talk about some of the things that you brought along and, and kind of the significance of them and why they're good options for folks here in Minnesota. Sure. All right, so let's start over here by Chris. What do we have in, in this area? Uh, so all of these are native plants that we have here. Um, these are all, for the most part, everything that's sitting on this table is a prairie plant. These are individual prairie plants. Um, there's a, a penstemon here, uh, really pretty foliage, um, really pretty flowers too. A couple of plants down here in the front, um, we've got columbine um, and then a thimbleberry, or a thimbleweed. Uh, those are kind of more woodland plants, mm -hmm. so we do have native plants that are good for shaded-ish Shady, types yeah, of areas. Shady, yeah, versus sun. Um, but then uh, prairie clover uh, and uh, prairie smoke, both of those are prairie plants, obviously, with the name. but. Um, uh, great plants to have in the garden. They're interesting looking, different um, as well, different than kind of typical flowers. They don't look like a sunflower a daisy. Can, can I uh, ask a dumb question, non-gardening guy? Where do, you, where, do you, where do you get this stuff? Um, you can get native plants in a lot of nurseries these days. There okay. are some nurseries around there specifically for native plants. Um, and then there are places in the state or out of the state where you can get seeds. Okay. Um, but we have a plant sale too. Um, May 10th and 11th, we have our own plant celebration. And yeah, you did you did bring some seeds over here too. Yeah. We can maybe show those and, and talk about those. Can uh, is it, are we at the time of the year right now where you can throw the seeds like in uh, the ground and that they'll yeah. come up, or is, uh, should we have already been should growing these under these, a, yeah, yeah. Well, throwing them under a light somewhere? Or you can throw seeds in the ground. You can throw them really any time of the year. You yeah. may or may not get something. It's a little late if you wanted to start something for this year, but you may still get some things popping up. Um, but the best time to throw it um, in the ground is actually throw it on the snow. If you've got a place where you want, just sure. in the middle of winter, throw them on the snow, they'll melt down, uh, kind of melt into the, the top of the soil, and they'll be good to go. That's about the easiest planting I've yeah, ever heard yeah. in my life. Yeah. I want to make, <laughs> really? make my whole yard native, <laughs> right. native right. plants. Yeah. Yeah. I was told we need to ask you about the big blue stem and the little blue stem. Oh, yeah. So native grasses in general are something that people kind of don't think about when they think about a, a garden or a flower bed, but yeah. they are fantastic, especially for native plants. Oh, that's what this is on the screen. Oh, yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, that's a big blue stem. Um, and so this right here, this is actually a whole cluster of little baby big blue stems. Um, and in this tray here, 
we've got both the big blue stem in this row and the little blue stem um, as well as a couple of other grasses. And so they grow the same, but it's just how, how tall they get. Well, no, they're the oh. big and blue stem. I'm not sure why big. I guess big maybe gets a little taller, but they're they're just uh, they're just a name. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. But they're not even related, really. Uh, but yeah, um, and bunch grasses are really good because flowers provide food for uh, pollinators. The bunch grasses provide shelter um, and a home, um, so they're important in that regard for native if, pollinators. If you or if you're planting like one sprig of grass like this, does it does it grow into what we saw on the screen? Yeah, there, yep, like a they, big... they kind of bulk up. Okay, because yep. um, I'm do... like, it's going to take me a long time to plant. Oh, if one's just one spring yeah. at a time. Yeah, no, it's, and it's kind of amazing. So this is, these are our plants that we're going to have at our plant sale, and these were all started from seed. They're really small now. Uh, the plant sale is in one month. Yeah. These are going to be way bigger. By oh, the really? Plant sale. Yeah, it's okay. kind of amazing how quickly they get big. Um, so, yeah, they'll get bigger. They'll be much more recognizable um, in May, and that happens with kind of everything that seeds up. The one tricky thing about grasses when, you're, when seeds are coming up is it's hard to tell a, a native grass from a... A like, weed or, yeah. yeah. Well, so make sure you plant them in a specific area so you know that you planted yeah. them yeah. there. That makes sense. What about prairie smoke? That was another one we were told to ask you about. Oh, yeah. That's uh, that's this one right there. Yeah. Um, it's a low plant, so it kind of gets, if you put it in a big garden, it kind of gets over top. But it's really cool. The flowers come up early. There are these pretty red flowers. It's that, um, huh? Ah, but those are, the, those, are the, those are the seed heads. They look like, I always kind of, they always remind me of Dr. Seuss kind of trees. It does look, They're yeah, kind it does of look weird that, looking. like that. And, and those are what, when people plant prairie smoke, those, it's those seed heads that people really like because they're really showy and gotcha. it's just a cool plant. I see you've got some uh, milkweed down there at the, at the very end. And I have yep. been hearing a lot about milkweed. And my wife swears every year, we need to plant milkweed. I don't yeah. know why we don't. Yeah. Uh, it, it, it grows pretty easily, doesn't it? Oh, yeah. So this is, this is common milkweed. This is common milkweed uh, inflorescence. Uh, and this is uh, the milkweed itself, the plant. Uh, we've also got butterfly weed here, which is another uh, uh, milkweed. Um, the common milkweed is very aggressive. Um, so if you're going to plant it in a garden, I would maybe just put one or two and kind of let it do its thing because it'll try to take over. Um, but yeah, it's a great pollinator plant specifically for monarchs, um, and they, they lay their eggs on it too. Um, yeah, butterfly weed is another milkweed. It's great. It's orange. It's really pretty. A lot of people, it's their end up being their favorite plant in a garden. Um, yeah, not as aggressive as the common, but uh, they're both great plants. I, I remember uh, being told to pull milkweed. <laughs> yeah. It did, back in the day, it wasn't as uh, oh, you know, yeah. Yeah, yeah. as thought of it as oh, highly as it is. Yeah, now. unfortunately, it's great now because it's uh, especially uh, trying to sort of promote uh, monarch uh, their their um, their movement and and just yep. their their genetic movement. Um, that's uh, they're really important. Um, and it's kind of too bad that they have the term weed in the name. Yeah, um, right, right. That's what I was think thinking about that. of. So. But, but they're good. They, they like, they'll keep themselves around, too, if you put them in there. Can I ask you real quick before you go about the state flower, the lady slipper? Is that yes. something easy to grow, and can you get your hands on it if you wanted it in your yard? Um, you can get your hands on it. That's what this one is. This is a lady slipper, a showy lady slipper. Um, they're not super easy to grow. They take, you, you got to kind of start them in a lab. Um, but, because you can't just throw seeds of an orchid in, in your garden and get orchids, unfortunately. Um, but you can find it, and if you take care of them, they can establish in a garden. You may not get babies, but they live a long time, um, and so it's possible to do, for sure. It was like magical the first time I saw one. Yeah. I hunted, we went for a hike in the bogs yeah. and bugs and mud. And then we came upon it, and I felt like I'd hit the lottery. The skies yeah. opened up. Just, yeah. The light like, shined the down upon slipper. the lady slipper. <laughs> and angelic voices came from heaven. It was awesome. <laughs> I was like, this is amazing. They so. used to be native in the Twin City area, too. That's mm. crazy. Yeah. Now you have to search for them. Well, David, thank you so yeah, much. Thanks, this David. was a lot of fun. Sure, thank you. Very we'll, we'll put a link for you folks to the Minnesota Landscape Arboretum for you on minnesotalive.com.